Welcome to Bella Vista Gardening. I'm Jerry Horner and joining me today is Dagmar Roeder and she's a fellow member of the Bella Vista Garden Club and the subject of the show today is growing and cooking with herbs and Dagmar is going to give us tips about uh, how to grow these wonderful herbs and add flavor to our wonderful meals that we cook and we'll also be talking about upcoming events and um, what you need to do in your garden in July. So um, there's not a lot of activities going on in July. Uh, it's kind of hot months to be working in the garden, but uh, you may want to walk the Compton Garden uh, trails uh, on a cool day. They always have wonderful things blooming all the time. Or you can take a walk through the trails at Crystal Bridges and see the Chihuly exhibit in the woods. It's just a fantastic glass exhibit and at night they light it up and it just it's wonderful or you can go to the botanical garden the Ozarks there's always something going on they've got a lot of summer things scheduled so at the botanical garden in Fayetteville so but today we're going to be talking about herbs yes and that is your forte yes and um, I just am amazed at all the knowledge that you can um, gather about herbs. It's just a wonderful, wonderful um, line of plants. So, But I want to take a little background of where you came from. I think you were born in Europe? Yes, I grew up in Europe and learned how to grow herbs and garden there. And then I moved to Canada and the climate was very different so I had to learn all over again. Right. And uh, in Europe, herbs were used very widely, much more so than in North America in those days and they were very common and so I came to North America and uh, was kind of disappointed herbs were not available. Now and what year was that? That was in the uh, early 60s. In the 60s. And so it was just dried things in a jar and that just wasn't <laughs> good, for, good enough for me. So I really um, started herbs from seeds and started an herb garden and used them I love cooking and herbs really lend themselves to oh, yeah. cooking, using them in the kitchen. And I have a very frustrating situation in my life. I'm in the kitchen cooking and I should be out in the garden <laughs> tending the herbs and then I'm back in the garden and then I think, oh, I could do this with the you herbs. You just get and cook. pulled in both directions yes, all the time. And so I've had a long, long uh, experience with herbs. Right. And then now I'm in Arkansas and I have to learn a little bit over again. It's milder. We have milder summers here. When and you moved here from Texas. Yes. I, I lived 30 is, years in Texas and that was quite an adjustment too. Oh, yeah. Texas has a lot of herbs for, that are native to new, to Mexico mm -hmm. and used to hot climates and so I had to learn that and now I'm in Arkansas and I have to relearn the cold facet of right, growing we herbs. Get colder in the winter yes. here. Yes, and a lot of herbs lend themselves to cold weather, mm -hmm. but then there are the sensitive ones like basil. Yeah. And basil is one of the most popular herbs oh, yeah. there is and usable in the kitchen. Well, you know, we always do the parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, that yes. musical. Yes. And then, of course, you always get basil, uh, cilantro, oregano garlic and chives and that's mainly what we get here I mean that's what you can usually buy in and this they're area. All, they're all kitchen herbs. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's so many more interesting herbs that um, you know like winter savory, summer savory, trailing rosemary, black stem peppermint, bay tree, Mexican mm -hmm. marigold mint and other mints and these are just ones you gave me you know off the top of your head. That, yes. You know yes. they're just you just can't find them in, um, in, uh, in right. West Arkansas. So they're just harder to find. But we can get started on them because things are available mm -hmm. online and we can start things from seeds. So uh, a lot of the ones you mentioned are very worthwhile in the kitchen as oh, well. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. absolutely wonderful. And you've got a um, bay tree that you planted. Yes, and so I'm very a little bit leery about it because they are uh, tender. Uh, you know, it's, More tropical. I think I'll have to uh, cover it in the winter. Um, and when you cover an herb or any plant, you should never use plastic. Okay. It, and the, uh, a cloth, an old bed sheet or something is really nice because that lets the air through mm -hmm. but protects it from the frost. Well, if you put a plastic over, you'll kill it. <laughs> yeah, yes. But you could also um, 
immerse the bay tree in a container into the ground mm -hmm. and then lift it up and, and take, it in. take it indoors. Because yeah. the fresh bay leaf is nothing like the dried bay leaves that yeah, we buy. Yeah, we see I the mean, dried bay just, leaves oh. in the jars. They call for, recipes call for those. So if you use the fresh ones, you should use more because right. the dried it has a more concentration in it and the fresh ones are milder. So, so if you you'd know, use like one teaspoon of dried, you'd use two it, teaspoons? Well, if you use one them. leaf, then you should use maybe three of the fresh I ones. See. And they're very, okay. very delicious and have a nice flavor and they grow into nice trees. Yeah. So um, very nice, useful yeah, herb. I don't know of anyone else that has a bay tree here. So we'll <laughs> see how this bay tree works. Yes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, I know you brought some, um, you did buy some herbs in Texas yes, recently, yes, so we'll uh -huh. talk about them, but I wanted yes. to show some pictures of some of the um, herbs and um, and that we have uh, from your garden. This first one I, is so interesting because I never think about putting herbs with annuals. You can mix herbs with anything. As a matter of fact, a lot of herbs are pest resistant. Some pests do not like the herbs and stay mm -hmm. away from it. So if you combine them with other plants, that can be a great advantage. Oh yeah, you couldn't get, like you won't get aphids or mm -hmm. things. Exactly. For instance, basil uh, is a fly and mosquito repellent. And so if you work in the garden, they buzz around your head. You just put some on your ears or rub them on your face and the bugs will leave you alone. And yeah. the same with the plants. If there's a basil plant, then it will repel those Well, I guess insects. that's why we don't have so many flies on our deck, because I have basil growing on my deck, so. Yes, they're very handy, besides okay. using it for food. Right, yeah, I just love that combination. And the rosemary bloom, this is the rosemary bloom. Mm -hmm. And um, I think just, rosemary is hard to grow here o in winter over. Yes, you rosemary, get the right yeah, it's not frost hardy. Yeah. So again, a container, mm -hmm. immerse it in the ground. But rosemary likes hot weather, hot, dry mm -hmm. weather, so never overwater it. And uh, it's very handy for cooking, too, right. and lots of meals. And then we have the basil. Those mm. are basils growing basil, in your garden. I, th I think that's one of the most popular <laughs> herbs. If you mention herbs to people, oh, uh, do you know basil? Mm -hmm. Or they prefer basil, or I love mm -hmm. basil. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about herbs is that, um, yes, basil, do you know basil? Well, which kind of basil are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Do you mean sweet basil? Do you mean spicy globe? Do you mean purple basil, mm -hmm. like this one right here? This is called purple ruffles. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many different kinds of herbs that makes it a little complicated, but right. also very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And they all have their own little nuances and flavors. Right. They're just so they're a fun. Different. They're fun to do. Right. This purple basil makes a beautiful red vinegar that can be oh, used I in love salad the dressing. Base. I yeah. do. I love yeah. basil uh -huh. vinegar. And then this is a chive bloom, right? Yeah, chive, these are just ordinary onion chives. The, the uh, leaves are tubular, they're hollow inside. And one thing that's really nice about the chives, and most people just ignore, are the blossoms. This one is just starting to bloom. It's desperate to get into the garden. It needs to be planted in the mm -hmm. ground. But the blooms are l round, globular shaped, mm -hmm. uh, actually a collection of uh, uh, they were just little petals coming of out. little little flowers combined. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, if you take the little flowers and take them apart and and just pull them off the flower the so you have a combination mm -hmm. and just mix that with a cream cheese or a goat cheese and it makes a wonderful dip. Just a little bit of yogurt in it and tiny bit of salt and it has a very mild, subtle onion flavor. Oh. And it's pretty because it's lavender colored. Oh, yeah. But most people say, oh, I'm finished with the, uh, with the chives. They're starting to bloom because the stems harden and they're not tubular yeah, anymore. You can't use so you cannot use yeah. the stem of, the, of these chives. But I encourage everybody to use the blossoms. They're just wonderful and they taste so good. Oh, so use the whole plant. Now is this, this bloom here is, that's the garlic? That's, um, that's the garlic chive, the garlic chives. and the blooms are very, very pretty. Mm -hmm. And strangely enough, as pungent as garlic is, the flowers smell like violets. Oh. So it's very nice to have that in your garden yeah. as well as cooking okay. with it. And garlic is a very repellent. It, it repels a lot of different yeah. insects yeah. and bugs. Okay. So grow it everywhere. <laughs> 
I have to grow it everywhere. Yes. Um, and this one is the... That's cilantro, cilantro. and it's, that's cilantro at its blooming stage. When it blooms like that, you cannot use the leaves anymore. It alters the flavor like and the bolted. leaves are gone. It's yeah, like it bolts and it goes to seed. Okay. And the seed of the cilantro is called coriander. So would you like a little story about that? Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, the Romans took cil and cilantro to England. And in England, cilantro is growing wild all over, mm -hmm. even up uh, now in present days. And uh, over there, it's called coriander because the seeds are named coriander. So that plant is called coriander. But because of our Spanish-Mexican influence in the South, uh, in North America, they are, you we call that plant uh, cor uh, cilantro. <laughs> cilantro. And uh, it's, it's related botanically to the parsley family and it's also used widely in Chinese cooking and in China and it's sometimes referred to as Chinese parsley. Chinese parsley, yeah. okay. Well, I have Very heard, pungent. I've heard that there's like 20 percent of the people that hate cilantro and don't like it at all. Yes. And can't even tolerate it and 80 percent do like it. Yes. And if you're one of those percentages, you're not going to change. You either like cilantro or you exactly. don't. So yes, yeah, some have actually to do dislike some it. testing. It's or because of the very strong flavor. Mm -hmm. But the coriander doesn't taste like the yeah, leaves. Yeah, the coriander do. is totally different. And also, one more hint about the cilantro: the stems can be used as well. For instance, if you want to make a pesto or something, or or throw it in a salad, mm -hmm. you can chop the stems and use them, even though they botanically belong to the parsley family. Parsley, you can't use the stems. They're bitter. They are bitter. Yeah. yeah. And it's, so, you know, if you, you want just to... just have to know your herb. Yes. Yeah. That, I was just going to get to that. And know your herbs. Know what they do. Know how they smell. Mm -hmm. Think about what you want to do with them and then plant them and then you can fully enjoy right. them. Okay. There's lots to be known about yeah. herbs. So many varieties. Uh, this is another picture from your garden. And you just... This is a new garden. You just moved to this house. Yes. Uh -huh. Not too long yeah. ago. It's fun starting a new yeah, garden. Starting I over. call this my oregano corner. There are two little ones on, on the side are Sicilian uh, oregano and the middle one is called hot and spicy. It's a little sharper tasting mm. and the front one is actually new to me. It's a variegated one. It's very low to the ground and very pretty. Mm -hmm. These all will grow into uh, bigger plants mm -hmm. and you know even if you don't want to make your own pizza or you don't want to make your own spaghetti sauce you can buy a can of spaghetti sauce and chop chop it up in there and, and just and add a little better. more. Yeah, make it yeah. better. And the same with pizza. Yeah. Just chop it and up. Buy a ready-made pizza and mm -hmm. you know order one and then just chop a bit of oregano on top and you on just enhance it. it by quite a bit. That's great. Well, I'm just really anxious to see your garden when it's um, matured a little bit more because right now it's beautiful with the, the smaller plantings. But yes. And I think I'm going to have to rethink my, my herb garden because I have an herb garden and I put all my herbs together, mm -hmm. which is a mistake. Not necessarily well, a mistake. It's a preference. The hot and dry, the rosemary, the sage, oregano, and lavender like it hot and dry. Yes. But I also have the, the uh, uh, thyme, thyme in there. Yeah, I saw And that. the thyme's doing great, but apparently my you know, other hot and dry ones don't like it there because well, it's a little too much shade. Well, thyme so, is not a hot and dry plant no. at all. It grows in the French Alps, and that can tell you something. It gets very, very cold there. Yeah. So it's very hardy. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's good to pair them with uh, similar plants, right. the hot and dry. Because everybody thinks just like I'll grow an herb garden and they put all the herbs together mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then they don't get the same moisture mm -hmm. and they some like it moist, some like it hot. That's true. Hot. It's it's better to make it comfortable for the herbs. Because it, the parsley and the cilantro and the basil and mints and chives, they, they all need like a little more water. More water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and I'm going to have to redo my Oh, mint garden. needs shade. <laughs> mint needs shade. Mint is very sensitive yeah. to heat. It doesn't. But like I keep heat. my mint in pots. I don't grow it in the ground okay. unless well, you have I, a, yeah. a contained area. It will take over your whole garden. Well, see, I want herbs to take over, <laughs> and I, you know, if you have the space, mm -hmm. then you have them like a ground cover right. all over. Right. So you have to decide mm -hmm. what you want. Right. But so you can grow them in the ground, and it, it can be fun. You just walk through it, and it just smells oh, so right. nice. Oh, yeah. 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 And I don't think the um, critters like uh, 
mint, no. Mint. Mm. That's a good thing about herbs. And Most the deer, herbs, I don't think, no, eat uh -uh. any of the mints. They just don't like the strong flavor. Right. And, oh yeah, I, I can't think of, it, of an herb that the deer would eat. So it's if we really mix nice. these herbs in with our other plants, it helps herbs, a little bit. You know that yeah. the deers do like. Maybe they'll leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to plant this mm -hmm. mint or this. One more little point about the everywhere. lavender. A lavender does not like humidity. It does not like being wet. And so when you water the lavender, like keep it as dry as possible. Mm -hmm. But when you water, just water at the bottom yeah, and like never, never system. water the leaves. I okay. mean, it does get water when it rains, mm -hmm. but lavender loves to be dry. It comes from the Mediterranean dry climates. Mm -hmm. And there's some lavender, so if you, if you have a problem having it dry or in the hot sun, get an English lavender because, you know, there's humidity in England. Oh, okay. There are many different kinds of there's uh, a lot lavenders, of different Provence, lavenders. and yeah, and some lavenders are more frost hardy than others, too. Mm -hmm. So that's a lavender. Yeah. Uh, lavender is very popular because the fragrance is so oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I use lavender oil at night. Mm -hmm. And I think it helps me sleep. You it's know, calming. I think it's calming, yeah. and yeah. I just put a little on my wrist when I go to bed mm -hmm. at night, and I just, it just calms yeah. me down, I guess. You can collect the blossoms and hang them in your closet and mm -hmm. keep moths away. In ancient days, people, like thousands of years ago, people used herbs uh, very, very actively. They would strew them on the floor so there wouldn't be any bugs or rats or mm -hmm. mice, and they'd just walk over them, crush them, bring out the fragrances. Well, our um, habits of bathing is a lot was a lot different back there, too, so yes. I think they used a lot of the herbs yes. to yeah. overcome the normal um, yeah. <laughs> aromas they would have because yeah. um, the herbs have been in existence for ever. Yes. And even in and the Bible. In use. And in use. Medicinal use. Medicinal mm -hmm. use. Yeah. And that would be a whole other you know, program yes. to talk about mm -hmm. medicinal herbs. Yeah. But um, on the garlic, I'm just start, now started, well, it's um, late June. Um, the garlic you plant in October, mm -hmm. which you harvest in June. Up to July. Or even a little later. Yeah. And I'm just harvesting now because I think I harvested it too early mm -hmm. in the past. That happens. So you have to gar you have to harvest when the plant and when the leaves, the leaves turn, turn brown, brown. Yes. and actually look like they're dying. Yes. Yeah. And I think I might have harvested too soon. Now garlic is the king of being an, a repellent for insects and, mm -hmm. and creatures and it has a, f a garlic chives and garlic have flat leaves mm -hmm. so you can take them and tear them up and kind of strew them in your in your yard and it'll so you don't necessarily have to plant them everywhere you can just take the leaves and yes and use yes. the leaves to yeah. deter but it's good things. to plant them garlic is good oh, yeah. as a companion plant for just about every plant okay now when the blooms come up on the garlic do you take the blooms off so that this, the uh, yes. pods get yes. bigger? Yes, uh, yes, and some people like to dry them and put them oh. in dried arrangements, and I tried that, and the house smelled awful, oh. just like garlic, <laughs> yes, very unpleasant, garlic. yeah. So you'd want an outside arrangement yes. with those. Yeah. those yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they're darling little uh, blooms. Mm -hmm. They kind of twist around. Pom-poms. <laughs> you yeah. know, and they're just so cute. But yes. I've always just pinched them off so that my clove would no, get No, that's bigger. okay. It's always good to pinch off the flowers because mm -hmm. then you get more leaves. Right. Mm -hmm. More of the energy goes into the yeah. leaves. And so, well, I think um, I've hit, sampled some of your wonderful creations with herbs. Well, you, you did a presentation at the Bella Vista Garden Club. Um, this past year and everybody was just amazed at all the things that you uh, created with these herbs, the, the wonderful little appetizers and, and it's fun. cakes and lots of things. And yeah, they're very useful in the kitchen. And we've put some of the, um, some of your recipes on our website. We'll have them on our website. Um, <clears throat> if you go to the bellavistagardenclub.com, it's under gardening info and um, it's on the home page. Then you just click on herbs on that gardening info page, and we're going to have a whole um, pestos. We're going to have pestos. We're going to have all kinds of recipes. Mm -hmm. And then also the tips about growing um, mm -hmm. the herbs, too. We'll be putting that on there, too. You have to excuse my voice. The allergies are really getting to me this year. They're, um, pestos are one of the best ways to preserve. Uh, 
an herb if you have a plethora of them too much. What do I do with it? Right. And uh, pestos are so simple to make. It just takes a few minutes. You know, basically oil, some nuts. People like using pine nuts. Right. I don't because they go rancid very fast. And I love pecans. Pecans mm -hmm. are very suitable for pestos. So, you know, uh, some a good olive oil, pecans, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and just and the leaves of, mm -hmm. of the herb and just you know grind just them, blend up, them in, up in either a blender or, or food processor mm -hmm. and then freeze it and it's right. so handy well i freeze mine in ice cube trays yeah that's nice so it's like a tablespoon in each little mm -hmm. cube and then i fr after they're frozen i put them in a bag so then i can just yeah. pull out a you know um and again you know tablespoon. If, you, if you want to make a spaghetti sauce or pizza sauce mm -hmm. just open a can of plain old tomato uh, sauce and just Add your herbs. Add make the it pesto. Yeah, um, add, add it makes a pesto. wonderful sauce. I, love, I have a whole freezer full of pesto. Pesto and oregano, so. and you've got and a I wonderful sauce. And I have used pine nuts. They're a little expensive sometimes. When you buy pine nuts. Pecans? No, pine nuts. Oh, pine nuts, yeah. So I freeze them. I put them in the freezer. Yeah. So keep them fresh. Keep them, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, you can make a pesto almost out of any herb. Mint, basil, See, I've never made cilantro, a pesto mint. parsley pesto. Yeah. They're wonderful, and they keep their flavor that way, mm -hmm. and they're very handy. You just... Now your mint is that you have here is amazing to me. You have a mint. That this you is cut. A, called a black stemmed mint, and it's a peppermint. The two main mints are either peppermints or spearmints, and some can have a bitter flavor, and the peppermints tend to be sweeter. Mm -hmm. And all mints spread, mm -hmm. and that's why people like growing them in containers. Mm -hmm. But if you want a lot, you are not letting them reach their potential in their containers. Mm -hmm. And if you have room in your garden or a shady corner, just let it go. And then you have as much as, you know, any time you have it available. And but it you've like, had this in your refrigerator. I've had this in the fridge for four days, and it stays fresh. Oh my so you, that shows you it likes cool air. Now will it, it and water. Um, root? No, I, it may root, but it needs light to root. So it, mm -hmm. if you keep it in the fridge, it won't. Root. It won't keep very long. But you know, just get a drink of water and toss this in your glass of water, and uh, it's just so handy That's to have it to indoors have and for your stay so fresh. Right. Yeah. Yeah, tea as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just am amazed it's four days. Because yeah. usually you bring it in, within a half an hour, it's mm -hmm. kind of Yeah, and basil are that way too. And basil yeah. too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now with my basil, I do extend my basil quite a bit. When I buy a plant, a basil in the spring, they always sell it before you need to plant it. <laughs> so yeah. I keep they it do. in, you know, the sunny window, and I cut the top off, mm -hmm. and I root that. So I double my my purchase basically I do by that too. you know yeah, yeah. Um, Very good. because it roots so easily mm -hmm. you just cut the top let it root and then I stick that down in this yeah. so if I buy a plant that's got three stems I end up with six stems yes you know, yeah eventually. and you can do that with the chives as well the they chives. divide easily yeah, yeah. and then um, uh, you can't really plant basil outside until it's really warm it is a hot weather plant, absolutely, and you can plant it, but it will not grow unless there. the soil temperature is 60 degrees right. or higher. And if the temperature at night gets under 50, they really don't like that. It won't hurt them, but they, they will not grow, so grow. It, you'll just have it sitting there. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you got to plant basil when it's... It thrives in the heat. Oh, it does. It really it does. does, but it needs a bit of water. Yeah. You can't let yeah. it go too dry. I do have it on my deck, and I just love it on my deck. Makes a nice aroma. So, well, I just thank you so much for all that information. My There's just pleasure. so much to learn. I think I'll be I'll be learning about herbs for the next, well, forever. The useful <laughs> plants. <laughs> you are, and I'll have to try some of these recipes because I've tried some of your cooking with them. It's wonderful. So, um, anyway, we also have to talk about what we need to do in our garden in July. And we've enjoyed some rain in June. We've had, you know, an inch here, an inch there. And I really haven't used my uh, watering system very much this year. I've been very lucky mm -hmm. to have just enough it's um, been a good spring, um, yeah. rain. This sp we had a little too much rain in the spring. Oh, and then when I had a lot, a lot of rain in the spring, my basil got these black spots on the leaves. That's over, yeah. And that's it's too just much, from too much yeah, water. The There's not much you can do. So I just take those leaves off and yes, and yeah discard them and put yeah. them in the compost. But whatever. if you have a container, you can take the basil inside or into the garage mm -hmm. and, you know, have it a little less humid. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of protect it from all that, all mm -hmm. that water. Um, 
and then, um, but you can conserve your water by using a drip system. I think a drip system is mm -hmm. the way to go with water. Less evaporation, so, mm -hmm. yeah, saving water. It's and true. then you don't want to, <clears throat> you don't want to water, uh, like every day. You want to water it deeply, and, mm -hmm. and then yeah, that's okay. a good idea. And mulch really helps too. You've got to have a lot of mulch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but as far as annuals and herbs, we have to deadhead. All the yes. annuals. Yeah, and a little them. bit labor intensive, but uh, yeah, it's worth it. And then, for, well, a lot of your annuals, the flowering annuals, they need a lot of fertilizer. They're heavy feeders. So well, that's the thing about you, herbs. You don't have they to don't water. need special soils. Mm -hmm. None of these rich soils for them because herbs originate, most herbs we grow here originated in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between spices and herbs. Mm -hmm. Spices are usually the seeds and they're from the east, mm -hmm. far east, and herbs are uh, originated most of them in the Mediterranean. Well, it's dry. And the Mediterranean is dry and mm -hmm. warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now as far as perennials, you gotta pinch back your mums about till uh, July 15th or so. I've pinched back tw twice already. They just keep putting buds out, my uh, mums. And um, that way you'll have a nice fall bloom. Now some people let them bloom early in the spring and then cut them off and then they rebloom. And I, I just haven't done that. I usually have a fall bloom on my mums. And lawns, they require at least an inch of water a week. So if you're not getting an inch of rain a week, you need to water your lawn, just not overwater. And hold back on the fertilizer in July and August. They don't need, your lawn does not need fertilizer right now. It's just a, too hot to be fertilizing. And you have to raise your, your blade, um, you know, cut to two and a half, three inches, mm -hmm. and don't cut it too low. It gives it more shade when it's a little longer. And then um, roses, do you, you do have a few roses, do yes. you? Yes, roses are considered an herb as well. You can use the flowers to make right, jam. Right, they're edible. And, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's nice to garnish a dish w with flowers mm -hmm. or uh, when you serve right. on a plate, just have a sprig of, of herbs or a little mm -hmm. flower there. Mm -hmm. And then you have to watch for aphids and fungus. It's, we've had a little fungus this, uh, this, when, this spring because of all the mm -hmm. water we've had. Mm -hmm. so. And the Japanese beetles, um, I've heard stories that people have had some Japanese beetles this year. I haven't seen too many myself, but it could be because I have the garlic planted in my rose yes. bed. So yeah, garlic who knew? Repels <laughs> so now I know beetles. I planted yeah. the garlic and I don't have Japanese beetles. So maybe that's the secret to get rid of these Japanese beetles. So, And then the trees, be sure and check your evergreens and your um, uh, for scale or for bagworms. A webworms, um, and if you have a bagworm, you have to just pick them off and then put them in a bucket and burn them because they're just um, on the nut trees. They're terrible the on the yeah. nut trees too. And so, if you've planted any shrubs or trees in the spring, just be sure you check their water, make sure they get enough water. And then vegetables, we'll be harvesting vegetables now. They should be coming in, and be sure you harvest before the critters get a hold of them. Yeah. So sometimes the the raccoons and squirrels get them before you can harvest them. And you want to pick them at peak flavor, so too. And um, I think the cool season herbs, I mean cool season vegetables, you wouldn't be planting until late August, September. Right. So, so if you have any other gardening questions, you can um, go to the Master Gardener website. It's bentoncountygardening.org and it's filled with gardening information. And then for more information on the Bella Vista Garden Club, um, uh, we can go to bellavistagardenclub.com. It's easy to navigate all the things on their website. And after taking a summer hiatus, um, we will be meeting again in September. So we'll meet at September 27th at 11 o'clock, and we're going to be in a new location. Yes. We're going to be meeting now at the Bella Vista Community Church on Lancashire. And we've met at the United Lutheran Church for years and years and years. And so, we, but we are making a change. Uh, we're growing, and we're, you know, having more members come, and we just need a little more room. So we had to move to the uh, the uh, Bella Vista Community Church. So it's going to be very nice. And um, we always welcome guests. Guests are always welcome at our meetings, and um, and. Uh, we have a luncheon and then a program and horticulture, so we have a lot of inf information at the, yeah. at the Garden Club. 
So thank you for joining me today. It was just so much fun to learn about all these herbs. I know I got so much more to learn. Well, thank so. you for having me. And I always love talking about oh, herbs because I, I just really enjoy them. You do. Yeah. One more little word about mm -hmm. fertilizing the herbs. Since you're eating them, I think it's better to use not commercial fertilizers, oh, yeah. but use fish emulsion or liquid seaweed. The herbs will do better, and you won't do yourself any harm by eating oh, them. Oh, that's another good thing. Yeah. Another good thing. So. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the program today, and we'll tune in again next month. And until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. <laughs> and the herbs. And the herbs. <laughs>